I'm Morgan Tracy. I'm the perinatal nurse navigator here at Wesley Medical Center. And today I have Dr. Taylor Birchie with me. She's one of our OBGYN hospitalists as well as the medical director for our birth rooms and birth care suites. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here talking about some postpartum and post-birth warning signs. Yeah. Um, so what, what are post-birth warning signs? Um, post-birth warning signs are really a collection of signs and symptoms that we want patients and providers to, to um, pay attention to because um, they could be a clue that there's something more serious going on during your postpartum course. And one of the reasons we make this a big deal is because up until you deliver, you're seeing your doctor weekly. Absolutely. And then once you hit postpartum, it's once you're dismissed from the hospital, how often do we usually see a doctor after that? You know, typically it's about a six week um, time period from the time you get dismissed from the hospital to when you see your doctor again. Um, that is starting to shift a little bit as we learn more about the postpartum course and how um, important it is to the pregnancy. A lot of physicians start moving that up to maybe a two to three week time period, depending on if you had any complications during your pregnancy. Gotcha. Um, why is this important? What is this, why is it important to talk to women about yeah. birth warning signs? So um, in the United States, the maternal mortality rate um, is increasing, unfortunately, and there is a big push across the country to work on decreasing those rates. And um, believe it or not, the postpartum course tends to be the most dangerous for moms. Um, we always think about the labor course, uh, you know, we worry about bleeding and things like that, but you know, postpartum, we run into cardiovascular disease, blood clots, um, postpartum preeclampsia, all of those things that, that lead to an increase in that maternal mortality rate. So we really just want to put education out there to both patients and providers. ER is really important. Pediatricians. Um, pediatricians, exactly. Yeah. So that they know that these are things that we need to pay attention to. Gotcha. Um, have you seen any improvement since we've started this education? I have. You know, it's slow. We've been doing kind of the six-week postpartum thing for a long time. Um, but doctors are, you know, being more diligent about making sure that patients have follow-up appointments. We have great education postpartum um, here at Wesley, and I know that there's a push across the state to do that as well. Um, and we've taken a lot of uh, steps to make sure that our ERs are very educated in, in these signs and in that, you know, a blood pressure above 160 systolic is not normal in a postpartum woman. So. And can you talk a little bit more about the Kansas State Initiative on all of this? Yeah, so the Kansas Perinatal Quality Collaborative is, is a group that has really pushed um, we, what we call the fourth trimester bundle. Um, and it's really an education push and a resource push across the state to, to provide um, resources for patients and, and providers to help decrease this maternal mortality rate. So part of the initiative is that patients are their best advocate. Absolutely. And if they know what to look for, absolutely, they are more likely to call their doctor and yeah. come in to be seen. Yeah, because you know your body as a patient better than a physician would. Um, you know, so if you come to me and you say, you know, I have this headache, I get headaches, but this is not normal. You know, this is this is there's something wrong here. You know, we need to listen to that and and make sure that we evaluate it appropriately. So some of the more common signs that I would like to talk about. Um, we give out magnets here. You can find it on the internet if you just, you know, Google post-birth. Um, some of the big ones are, you know, chest pain. You know, that can be indicative of some heart issues, um, shortness of air. Um, that can be indicative of blood clot issues along with, you know, if you have swelling or pain in your leg, one leg greater than the other. Um, headaches that are not relieved with Tylenol or your normal headache medication. Um, seizures. We have some moms come in that just have sudden onset seizures postpartum. Um, those are all things that need to be paid attention to and, and talk to your doctor um, or go to the emergency room. Poor wound healing tends to be one, having a fever, a temperature of 100.4, um, and bleeding, heavy, heavy vaginal bleeding. So what I usually say is if you're soaking through a pad an hour for more than two hours, you need to be seen. So. Um, a lot of people have anxiety and they would attribute chest pain to anxiety if they're not sure if it's their anxiety or cardiac. Absolutely. If, if they have history of anxiety. Yeah. Come in and still, see us. Yep. Still better to get checked out and make yep. sure that, that it's not your heart. Yeah. That. And, maternal, and if there's some anxiety, there's some other things we can, resources we have for that. As right. Well. Maternal mental health is, is just as important as having chest pain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that is a big push. The, the Quality Collaborative really puts an emphasis on maternal mental health because in Kansas, um, you know, suicides and homicides tend to be a, a pretty big um, reason that our moms die postpartum. And I think there's always been a stigma in the past about how maternal mental health, you know, moms just have to suck it up, pull their pants up and, and be super mom. And that's not true. Being a mom's hard. 
Um, and we want to make sure that you realize that, that it's okay, you're not alone, and that there are resources and we can help you. Yeah. So I agree with that. Um, I think that there's a lot of pressure on mom's men mental health in all of this. And they talk about postpartum blues versus postpartum depression a little mm -hmm. bit too. Um, is there, can, what's a good sign of difference with those? You know, I, postpartum blues is just, you know, you're kind of not feeling yourself, you know, you're tired, um, you have, you're taking care of a human. It's just kind of, to me, it's more of an adjustment period where postpartum depression tends to be a little bit more severe. It tends to be a little bit longer lasting. It persists past that two week mark. Um, you know, you might require medication for it. Um, you start to have thoughts of hurting yourself, hurting, hurting other people, hurting your baby, um, or, um, you know, just not, not doing your daily, you know, activities, daily, daily living, not functioning well. This is where good communication with your partner and your significant other um, is, is very good because they are watching from the outside as well. So they can help um, with some of these uh, symptoms and help you to see some of this as well. So being open to that communication prior prior to ever delivering and having open lines of communication with each other can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of great mental health resources here um, to help connect people with therapists and counselors as well as needed. So. Um, so physically, we want you know post birth warning signs. Those are your physical symptoms, um, but not to to um, put down any of the mental health aspects as well. These are just as important um, for you and your and your family um, as these post birth warning signs. Absolutely. So, anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. I think that that covers the majority of it. Wonderful. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for chatting with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.